Recording has started. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the special meeting of the Board of Finance, uh, June 14th. We will call this meeting to order. Will we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag. of the United States of America, America to the Republic for the which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> okay, welcome. So we have a special meeting tonight, relatively short agenda, but we do have four voting items tonight to take care of. Uh, for the public, you may send your comments pertaining to an agenda item before or after the meeting to the following email, bof at fairfieldct.org. And as you would in a public meeting, please include your name and home address with your comment. You know, perhaps when we start meeting again in September, it will be in person, or at least the option to be in person, um, with some potential, if someone's out of town, with some Zoom meeting or WebEx meeting availability. Uh, but we are hoping to get back together in September. So, we will go right to item number three. Uh, Mr. Foley here with us. No, Mr. Norton. Who's going to yes. present, Mr. Foley or Mr. Norton? Uh, I'll present. Okay, let me just put this before us. To hear, consider, and act upon a request from the WPCA to appropriate $144,000 from the WPCA fund balance to complete the WPCA portion of the microgrid project. Can I have a motion to put this before us? Mr. DeWitt, uh, second by Mr. Rotola. So this item is now before us, and we did receive some backup to this item. And I will turn it over to you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Norton. I'm the superintendent of the Fairfield Water Pollution Control Facility. Um, <clears throat> this project um, started back in the end of 2008. Um, about 2017, and then once the hardening project was approved, the state required us to shut down until the hardening project was completed to go ahead and restart this project. So from that time on, from September of 2018, the project's been on, on hold <clears throat> until um, some most of the work on the hardening project has been completed. Now they, they've gone to remobilize and a lot of the switch gear and things that they have on site uh, needs to be um, refurbished and re reauthorized. And then also a lot of the equipment that they hadn't ordered yet, uh, conduit, um, wire, and, and things of that nature, <clears throat> the price has um, gone up exponentially. Um, it's exploded. I think everybody knows construction materials have uh, skyrocketed over the last few months. So. Uh, that is most of this change order here that you see before you. <clears throat> and um, this is what we're requesting to go ahead and get this <clears throat> project uh, uh, started back up and um, as far to, uh, uh, to hopefully to completion. Uh, you can see there's a change order for Schneider and the backup uh, from for their change order from Yankee Electric, who's the contractor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norton. So I'm just looking at the backup from uh, Yankee Can Yankee Electric, correct? And yes. so they they talk uh, through the increase of 196,000. 196,000, you're looking for 144,000. Yes, because there's some funds still remaining in the project. Okay. If you look at, um, the, the um, description prepared by Laura Pooley from May, May 13th. Yes. So you can see that they, uh, the uh, she goes through the change orders. In the first one, we received an additional grant of $313,939. <clears throat> and then um, we issued another change order for 28 1872 to refurbish some of the equipment um, due to the delay. 
And then the third one is the 235 uh, 5552 uh, 20 cents for the um, <clears throat> additional equipment and that needed to be ordered, some of the additional equipment that needed to be refurbished, pads that needed to be poured, uh, some of the pads <clears throat> needed to be poured on site. And as everybody knows, from dealing with the hardening project, um, we can't seem to put a shovel in the ground without hitting some contaminated soil. Um, <clears throat> And that's what we did on the uh, water uh, pollution control site behind our uh, return activated sludge building, where these uh, uh, switch gears were going to be placed. So in order to put those pads, we had to remove soil <clears throat> down to eight feet and put in some clean fill. We also had to remove soil along the um, um, fire academy front. Uh, fortunately, that stuff was clean, so we didn't really have to do too much to that. Uh, so. Um, as you can see, uh, we had about $118,000 left in the project. And then you can see what Laura was asking for was 125,55520 plus the 15% 15, 15, contingency. So that's where we get the 144,388,48. Okay. Just one last quick question. I'll turn it over to the board. Why does Schneider mark it up 20%? What's that for? <clears throat> that's their. Um, standard uh, uh, percentage for their project costs. We actually talked them down from 25%. We would have liked to have gotten further, but that's as far as we could go. I'm sorry, it's further what cost? The the, the, that's, cost? Yeah, that's their design costs. They're the design. Okay. So, okay. That's okay. their markup. Further questions from the board? I'm seeing none. Okay. So this item is before us, so we will take a vote on it. This was um, approved by the Board of Selectmen earlier today. Uh, I believe it was unanimous. So all those in favor of the $144,000 to be to appropriate $144,000 from the WPCA fund balance to complete the WPCA portion of the microgrid project, please say aye. 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 I just want to make sure it's 144,388,48. Okay, that's not what it says. It says 144,000. So what did the Board of Selectmen vote on? I believe they voted on the 144,388,48. It's one hundred forty-four thousand three hundred forty-eight dollars. It's one hundred forty-four three eighty-eight forty-eight. All right, one hundred forty-four thousand three hundred eighty-eight dollars forty-eight cents. Okay, yes. that's what's that's on correct. our agenda. That's on our agenda. Yeah, that's not what's on mine. Our, our agenda says forty-three. It doesn't matter. I'm going to reread it. I'm going to redo it. Yeah, I'm going to reread this with the correct amount and then we'll vote on it. Okay. So, to here consider and act upon a request from the WPCA to appropriate $144,388.48 from the WPCA fund balance to complete the WPCA portion of the microgrid project. I'm going to put this motion on the table. To amend, Jim? I think we have to amend it. Our we have to amend it. We do have to amend it, yes. All right. So, can I have a motion to put the amended motion before us? Mr. DeWitt, seconded by Mr. Walsh. So, the amended motion is now before us. Any questions, comments on the amended motion? Mr. Walsh? No. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment? Say aye. Aye. Okay, that is unanimous. Now we have to vote on it. We're good. Okay, we're good. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, everyone. Okay, before I read the next one, is it nine hundred and forty-five thousand dollars? Well, yes, Mr. Bremer. Yes, it's it nine hundred forty-five thousand three hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Okay, I'm aware. Okay, so we're on item number four. 
resolved that the attached bond resolution entitled a resolution, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Brown, I think we made a motion to amend. I don't think we voted on the amended motion. Okay. You make a motion to amend and we voted unanimous, right? Now let's vote on the amended motion. Now we have to vote on the amended motion. Okay. So the amended motion is before us. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. that is unanimous. We're off to a good start. We're on item <laughs> number four. Item number four, resolved that the attached bond resolution entitled the resolution appropriating $945,000 for the remediation of historical contaminants and enhancement of recreational facilities at the Gold Manor Park and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation be and hereby is approved. I have this motion before us, please. Mr. DeWitt. Seconded by Mr. Walsh. This motion is now before us. Uh, Mr. Bremer, are you going to walk us through this? I'm going to walk you through it. Um, what I would call your attention to, I, as I said earlier before the Board of Selectmen, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I would like to call your attention to the two maps that I put as part of my background presentation. And if you look at the main map, and that's the map with the two uh, baseball fields on it you'll you'll get a sense of what we're going to do at Gould Manor uh, this is to uh, remediate the Gould Manor Park you can you'll see that there's some areas that are sh that have an orange line going around them and although my map is a little newer than yours and is slightly changed from what you have it's it's you certainly will get a flavor of what we need to do as you as you may all recall, this is not Julian Phil. This is all historic uh, contaminants which were discovered uh, when we removed the Julian Phil from the sidewalk along the park. Um, so the plan that you have before you has been submitted to the Department of Health Services. We're expecting approval on that plan within the next week or two, and which is why we're asking to move forward with it on it now. Because we really want to, we really want to be able to move on this so that we can uh, prepare this this park uh, for the springtime of next year. Basically, the orange areas are the areas that we're going to excavate and remove. You'll see in the upper left corner of the uh, map I was referring to earlier is the tennis court. We're going to there's orange bars on either side of it. We're going to need to remove that area. You can see some an area along Crestwood. Uh, is that Crestwood? Yeah, Crestwood Road. We're going to remove that, and a much larger area up by the playground. Uh, we're going to remove that as well. We dig down six inches. We replace with clean fill. We put sod over. Uh, as as my one page outline talks about, that's going to really uh, focus on what we call the hot spots, and that's the the worst historical contaminants on the site. We're also going to repair the ball fields, which have laid dormant basically for two years. Uh, and they need a lot of uh, work to get them in playing shape. Um, we're not looking to rebuild those. We're not looking to rip them all up. What we're really looking to as part of our remediation plan is to lay another, another layer of material on both of those to basically add another protective layer uh, between the kids and uh, the the uh, contaminants. Uh, that will cost approximately $250,000. Uh, we know that when we go and remove the area around the tennis court, and the areas around the uh, playground, we're going to do a lot of disruption. So in talking with Anthony Calabrese, uh, we believe that we need, we're going to need to resurface the tennis court, which is very old. And if you've ever played on that court, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of cracks in it and that sort of thing. When we remove a lot of the area not near the playground, that playground is approximately 20 years old. So it seemed to us that this is the best time to replace that playground as well. 
And by replacing that playground with a slightly more enhanced playground, this gives Anthony an opportunity to remove the second playground, which is on the second map over on the top right corner is the second playground. Uh, and he wants to replace that with a, the town's first outdoor fitness facility, which uh, a lot of people are excited about that possibility as well. Uh, I would also call your attention in the second map to uh, an area that I missed. If you look at the second map, the lower portion of it, there's a pretty large area of orange as well that we're going to be replacing. That's all part of the remediation efforts. So all in all, we're going to replace a number of the areas with uh, clean fill and sod. We're going to we're going to top dress, redress the two ball fields. We're going to uh, replace the playground. We're going to re resurface the tennis court, and when we're done, we hope to have a really, really first-rate uh, park that's been completely remediated, completely safe for the citizens of Fairfield, and uh, will be an area that we're all proud of when we're done. The total cost of that, as I laid out, is nine hundred forty-five thousand. I was asked at the Board of Selectmen if that's something that uh, is a conservative estimate. Uh, frankly, my sense was they were concerned that we, we have enough money to do everything. And what I, my response to that is I believe that that's a conservative estimate. I believe that's going to be sufficient to make all the changes and make all the fixes that we need to make. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as I sit here today, what I've learned about these remediation efforts is you don't really know until you start doing it. So my my plan, frankly, is to I believe that the number will be conservative and should be sufficient to cover all our costs. But I my plan, frankly, is once it starts, which I hope to start, I hope to start this uh, probably by the end of the month. If every oh, if all my approvals come through, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait about a month into it, and then we'll have a better sense if there's any additional expenses that we didn't know, and then I'll be more than happy to come back to the various boards to, to give you an update on uh, what we're finding. But as I sit here today, I think I'm very comfortable with the numbers. I'm comfortable with the plan, and. Uh, as I said before the Board of Selectmen, we're not going to move forward unless the Department of Health says that this plan is approved. And once it is, then we're going to move forward rapidly thereafter. And I'm hoping, well, I'm not hoping, I, ex I expect that once the remediation efforts are done in terms of the removal of the contaminants, then the work on the fields and everything else will begin and I expect the fields will be ready for the spring ball. So that's why we're kind of pushing now because we don't want to wait till September, October. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bremer. Uh, Mr. DeWitt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chris DeWitt. Mr. Bremer, thank you. Thank you for the overview. Um, it's It's good to hear that uh, the first select woman will be thrown up the first pitch next spring at Gold Manor. Uh, that, that's really good news. Um, uh, the, the final line here, all vendors will be state approved. So we we are contracting this whole effort out, right? This isn't a DPW effort to um, dig down the six inches and replace this as all outside vendor? That's correct. And we're going to use the same vendor that we're using who's already begun remediating a, a number of other sites. We want to use the same vendor on this site. That that that's great news, and um, and I'll say the other thing. You know, when I was reading this, um, I'm really glad to hear that we're not replacing just the orange areas and and not talking about the the ball fields or the tennis courts because um, what, what a what a it's a unique opportunity. Even though it's not a you know a fortuitous opportunity, it is a unique opportunity. For us to, you know, make Google Manor back to or better than it than it was before. So, I think this is a great plan to take into account the tennis courts, take into account the ball fields, and 
to let Anthony go ahead and, and make this into um, a better recreation space than it was before. So thank you to the team that put together this plan. Great, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. DeWitt, Mr. Matola. Brammer, Brammer, hey, you said something about the ball field like you wanted to put an extra layer on the field to protect the children who are going to be playing in those ball fields. I, I think you said on contaminants. Was there any contamination found under the ball field? No. There, I, I guess the better way to put that is no, there, there isn't any hot spots on any of the ball fields. Um, okay. But I, I look at it like the more we the more we put down, the more protection there is. Uh, so I, I guess maybe I maybe I misspoke on that. That's okay. I just wanted to clarify that uh, mm -hmm. for the public in case someone was listening. And then the other question I had, and and Anthony, maybe you can answer this: was uh, was a new playground at Ghoul Manor somewhere on your on our um, waterfall chart master plan that we were going to do later on? down the years. I'm not sure if Anthony heard that, but, but I know the, I know the playground out there is approximately 20 years old. So if it's not on, Anthony, on can the, you, did you hear his question? No, I'm sorry. He was asking if the replacement right. of the playground is on the waterfall. It is. Uh, no, it's actually, it was not on the original waterfall because that's our, probably our newest playground. At 20 years old. Okay. All right. Um, so that equipment, we're going to remove it. It can't be used anywhere else. It's just it's better just to get rid of it. Okay. That's that's fine. And um, and I and, and this is just a general question. I know we're going to we vote on this. We authorize the town to bond for this. Uh, and you, you may not be able to answer these questions yet. But is there any thought of of, of uh, paying for maybe the playground through the federal funds we're going to be getting uh, in the, the near future. So, at least, at least his friend, is there a thought? <laughs> yeah, so, committing it. so, John, if yeah. I could just jump in on that. Um, listen, we're working on this list. We, we have a uh, hopeful plan to go before the joint meet, you know, boards to show all of our items that we think are priorities and all items. Now, if okay. if a lot of the items that we're currently looking at for the recovery money it are items that have already been approved for bonding, and so it it um it this this authorization does not preclude the the bodies to say, oh, you know what, we want to pull that off the bonding list and we want to put it uh, on our recovery list. So that's okay. an option, without a doubt. Thank you very much for explaining that. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matola. Further questions on this item? Mr. Walsh. You're on sure. mute, Chip. Thanks, Brenda. I think this is a great plan. I think it's a very comprehensive plan uh, with this, unfortunately, this beautiful park being closed for as long as it has been and for that neighborhood not to be able to use that park and some of the needs that have been identified for other things to be done there. I, I, I think it's a project we have to do and to do it fully, get it all done and return this park to our taxpayers and especially that neighborhood that had to live with this and see that orange fencing that's been up. I mean, it's kind of a nightmare what happened over there um, with what happened with you know, everything that went, went, went on. I do have a question to Anthony. Um, after this is all done and that we restore this beautiful park and those ball fields, in regards to the ball fields, does Fairfield American Little League have to take over the maintenance of those fields again after that, or how does that work? So they don't take the maintenance of those fields. Uh, the only field they have the maintenance of, the only field they have the maintenance of is Mill Hill. Uh, so no, they don't take the maintenance. If they want above and beyond what the town provides, we get the opportunity. Okay. So we're in charge of basic maintenance and anything above and beyond that they have to take control over. That's correct. Uh, perfect example would be they have 
three games scheduled for that day. We'll line it once in the morning, but if they wanted to line each game, they would pay the contractor to come back to you. All right. And another question I have for John Staffson, since I see him on the phone, I may as well take advantage of his hourly rate while he's here. Um, <laughs> I, like put, I like to put lawyers to work, so that's, you know, if he could come back on, that would be great. Uh, but, John, my reading of the bond, it's really a spending authorization, the resolution that's attached. And therefore, if we get any money from the federal government or the $25 million, $24 million, what's being discussed as Mr. Matola brought up, it's up for the town. We could use some of that funding to not bond all of this money and to adjust it any way we want. Because this is really kind of a spending authorization with a bond resolution we could spend up to that amount, correct? That's correct. The grant would be applied against the bonding authorization. Okay, so that'll be a decision for another day. Right. That's what I thought I read, so I just wanted to make sure. So uh, thank many, you. Many, many of our client, many, many of our clients are doing that these days. Yeah, excellent. So for all those reasons, I think we should all move forward with this. I'm fully in support of it. Thank you. Can we all agree that we're going to watch Brenda throw out the first pitch? One school minute is up to par. Can we all agree that we have our outside board of finance meeting that night? When do you, seriously, Anthony, when do you think that might happen? When will the ball fields be ready? Spring, I right? I, I, I heard Tom about it. The spring. This next spring. Yeah, next spring. We want to start this work, like Tom said, um, by the end of this month and uh, hopefully through the fall and have everything ready to go. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. you know what? I was on mute. It's been a rough night so far. Okay, I'll read the bonding resolution and um, we'll take a vote. A resolution appropriating $945,000 for the remediation of historical contaminants and the enhancement of recreational facilities at Gold Manor Park and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriations as recommended by the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen, the Town of Fairfield, the Town, hereby appropriates a sum of $945,000 for costs related to the remediation of historical contaminant and enhancement of recreational facilities at Gold Manor Park, as well as all related administrative financing, legal contingency, and other soft costs, the project. Can I have a motion, please, put this before us? Mr. Walsh, seconded by Ms. Charlton. Okay, any further questions on this resolution? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. So this item passes. Uh, Mr. Staffstrom, thank you for joining us. You are free to go. Thank you all. Brings us to item number five. To hear, consider, and approve approve the appointment of auditors for fiscal year 2022. Can I have a motion to put this item before us? Uh, Mr. DeWitt seconded by Ms. Marmion. So this item is now before us and I will turn it over to the chair of our audit committee, Ms. Charlton. Ms. Charlton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think everyone receive the audit engagement letter, the proposed engagement letter and the backup materials. Uh, so just as background, our current auditor, PKF O'Connor Davies, provided a five-year cost proposal for audit services back in 2017, uh, covering audits for each of the fiscal years beginning June 30th, 2017 and ending this June, 2021. So this is the last year of that proposal. And the fees outlined uh, in the engagement letter of $105,915 are consistent with the five-year proposal 
And that fee for 2021 is an increase of about 2% from last year's audit fee. Um, the fee covers the audit of the town's comprehensive annual financial report, CAPR for short, uh, as well as the federal and state single audit requirements, which are provisions that require audits of federal and state grant money. There's also an additional $3,600 in the engagement letter relating to requirements set forth by the State Department of Education. Um, those requirements were effective last year, and last year's fee was $3,500, which was billed directly to the Board of Ed, which would also be the case this year. Um, from my perspective, and I'd invite comment from uh, the members of the audit subcommittee or others on the board, um, I think PKF O'Connor Davies has provided good service to the town. They've been responsive, they've been candid to the subcommittee and our board with respect to all matters that have come up during the audits, including potential areas of improvement. Um, for that reason, I'm personally supportive of reappointing them as our auditor for fiscal 2021. Um, you know, with that said, um, I do think it's healthy to evaluate or reevaluate a professional relationships from time to time, and our audit is no exception. And you know, in the future, that may um, include soliciting competitive bids, um, you know, in another year, um, especially given that we're at the end of this five-year arrangement. And that's something we can certainly explore going forward um, after this year, if there's a desire to do that. Um, but given, given the timing, given where we are, the fee uh, that's consistent with, uh, with what our original proposal was, um, again, I am supportive of uh, reappointing them. Uh, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Charlton. Any further comments? Mr. Walsh. I, I think we've got an excellent service for our auditor. Um, we've worked with Joe for a number of years. We have a lot of confidence in him. We continue to give him more assignments. And, and you know, for, a, I guess, 2% or slightly less than 2% increase, I think uh, I feel very confident going forward with his firm. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Any further comments? Mr. Fogel, did you have your hand up? You're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, you know, again, I'm new, new to this here. I'm trying to learn, but um, it does make sense to me, you're right, at this point in time to probably open it up for to evaluate other proposals. Not that there's I have any reason to question this firm at all, but for next year, it probably does make sense to do that. I assume this firm has a lot of public entity experience. Yes. Okay. Yes, they do it. And I, um, Mr. Chair, can I just respond directly? Yes, Mr. Alton, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, and there are, there are only a limited number of firms that actually do this work. Um, you know, the larger firms don't do municipal audits anymore. I, I, I want to say there's, you know, three or four firms uh, that do this work in the state of Connecticut, including PKF O'Connor Davies. So they're well qualified. Um, and, you know, we have gotten good service. But, you know, sometimes, you know, towns go through this process, they reevaluate the relationship and they end up staying with their current provider. Um, but it's it's something, you know, we, we got this fee proposal for five years. This is year five. Again, I think it makes sense to, to um, you know, finish this out. And then, you know, if there's a desire to, to you know, see if there's something we don't know or, uh, or if we want to, you know, feel out what's in the market, we can do that going forward. Thank you. Mr. Fogel? Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Any further comments? I, I, I would also like to say that uh, Mr. Centafonte, um, who represents BKF O'Connor Davies, that he, just to say he does a great job for us, um, he's always available. And we go to him uh, throughout the year for certain questions, recommendations, and he's, he's there for us. He has done a great job for the audit committee and for this board and for this town as a whole. And he has experience with other towns as well, not just his company. Um, on top of that, he's on the board of finance of this town. 
so he can give us some perspective as a board member. So I, I would agree that uh, at this point in time to stay with PKF O'Connor Davies and the fact that Mr. Centafonte will stay with us for at least one more year is a plus for us. Not to mention he did a really good job with the uh, DPW audit as well. Yeah. Mr. DeWitt. And, and if I may add one more reason to keep them on for another year, uh, Mr. Centafonte is helping us with our purchasing policies and um, we look forward to hearing his uh, recommendations in the next, um, by the end of this month. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Any further questions or comments? Okay, then I would like to make the motion to reappoint uh, PKF O'Connor Davies accountants and advisors for the auditors for the town of Fairfield for fiscal year 2022. May I have a second, please? Seconded by Ms. LeClaire, who's also on the audit committee. So this is on the table. Are there any questions? Further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of this motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That is unanimous as well. Thank you, Ms. Charles. Going to item number six to appoint the clerk and the assistant clerk for the Board of Finance for next year, ending May 2022. May I have a motion to put this item before us? So move, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Testani, seconded by Mr. DeWitt. So, so a couple comments. Um, the appointment of the clerk, as we all know, is part of our town charter. And the clerk for us, for our board, keeps the minutes of board meetings and is the custodian of our books, papers, and data relating to the conduct of its business. The clerk must have experience in the financial field and or be a certified or licensed public accountant and has the right to call upon all town departments, boards, commissions, committees, authorities, and officers for such information as the clerk may reasonably require in connection with the duties of the clerk and responsibilities of the Board of Finance. So with that said, I want to compliment uh, Jared Smith, who's been acting as our clerk for the past year, and he has done uh, one and three and has the financial experience to, to be our clerk. And I, I've worked well with him and he's provided the information that we have needed to for the, uh, for the town and for the business of this town. So I am going to recommend. Suzanne, uh, should I? Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Just hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. So I'm going to make a recommendation um, that we appoint uh, Jared Smith as the clerk for the Board of Finance. Can I have a second, please? I'd second Seconded that motion. Seconded by Mr. DeWitt. Any questions, comments on the appointment of Mr. Smith as the Board of Finance clerk? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Mr. Schmidt, I should ask you, do you accept the position of clerk for the Board of Finance? I do accept. Okay, that's good, because you are voted in. Now, for the assistant clerk for the Board of Finance has been uh, Ms. Jennifer Carpenter, who again does a, a excellent job for our board in getting the agenda and the backup prepared and organized from Mr. Schmidt and she gets it to us in a timely manner. And she's also available to any member of this board for assistance. So with that said, I'd like to recommend Ms. Jennifer Carpenter to be the assistant clerk for the Board of Finance. Can I get a second? Seconded by Mr. Walsh. Any questions, comments about Ms. Carpenter and the assistant clerk for the Board of Finance fiscal year 2022? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. All right. So all in favor, any opposed? It is unanimous. So we have Jared Smith as a clerk for the Board of Finance and Jennifer Carpenter as assistant clerk. It doesn't say, at least on my agenda, and I have a different one than you for any further communications. 
So I am going to regardless ask for any further communications for this board. I'll go to you, Mr. Smith. Uh, I do this evening. I have two two things that I would like to communicate with the board. Um, one is that we uh, recently had our our ratings meetings with the bond rating agencies and recently got notification that we have they have reaffirmed our triple a rating so good news from both of them from fitch and moody's um that we have a triple a rating going into this uh bond issue which would be on the 23rd of june okay that's that is excellent news we all know how important that is for us as a board and for us as a town so thank you for sharing that and congratulations to uh, to us all, every board member, for keeping that uh, AAA rating intact. Mr. Walsh? Could we get copies of the the reports from the bond bond rating agencies? I mean, I think we should just kind of, as the Board of Finance, probably all read them. So, I mean, it's great. And, and number one, Jared, I know that's a lot of work. So thank you and your department and uh, well, for getting that all done. I think it's great news. But if we can get a copy of the report, that would be great. Will do. Okay, any further comments on the AAA, Mr. Testani? Yeah, I just want to dovetail off what Mr. Walsh said. I just want to thank Jared and, of course, the first Slack woman for all their efforts. It's a, obviously in a COVID year, difficult to have overcome what the town overcame and to still excel and have the AAA credit rating. So thank you for the efforts on that. And I do look forward to reading it as well. Uh, thanks for, for taking care of that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Testani. Any further comments on that item? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, anything else? Uh, one more thing. Uh, as you probably heard, the state passed a state budget um, at the uh, last week. Uh, close to the last night. It really was the last day of session. And uh, some good news, a little more good news. Uh, our municipal aid is going to go up in FY22 by approximately $1.1 million. Uh, the state had an opportunity to put more additional funding into the uh, pilot payment in lieu of taxes for our colleges and hospitals that we host. And so they they did, they um, ramped up the amount of funding that went into it. In addition, they uh, also increased, uh, created a new formula, which increased the uh, Fairfield's percentage that we receive. And so you will, uh, you'll see an increase in our pilot for colleges and hospitals of about $1.1 million next year, over, over what was budgeted, over what we included in the budget. Which was what, Mr. Smith? Do you know? Uh, I can tell you in one second. So that it was it was kind of tricky to work out because they totally redid the formula and created a combined grant. They they used to have uh, two different grants. One was for pilot colleges and hospitals. The other one was for state-owned property, and they created a combined grant. And so the amount that we used to get was about 1. Uh, 1.8 million. And we are going up to almost 3 million, just under $3 million. Okay. Thank you. That's good news. That's, that's two items. Give us a third. That's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> I will take it. AAA and $1.1 million. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Any further comments, questions from anybody? All right, this is our last meeting uh, until September that's scheduled. But let's not count on it. I'm sure good chance we'll see each other before September uh, for one reason or another. Um, so we'll let you know if a special meeting comes about. But if it does not, everybody enjoy uh, enjoy their summer. So can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Mr. Walsh, seconded by Mr. DeWitt. All those in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.